Hello everyone, Mr. Taylor here again, coming back at you from my living room for another lesson from the Weather Patterns Unit. Um, today we are doing lesson 2.4, which is titled Analyzing New Data About Gale Town. So clearly today we will be getting some new information, some new data about Gale Town storms that will hopefully help us solve another piece of the puzzle about why their rainstorms have been getting so much worse over time. Uh, and just a quick note for you all, you can totally uh, go through this lesson with me on Amplify's website, or you can use the packet provided to you by your teacher or just a blank piece of paper. But something I do need to say is for this lesson, especially if you are using the computer um, or you don't have the packet, you will need something to write on for today's lesson because not everything can be completed in the website itself. So uh, if you have the packet provided by your teacher, it actually has all the stuff you need. But if you don't have that, just a separate piece of paper will work out for you. So let's get started on today's lesson by going right into this warm up. So this warm up provides us with some new information about Gale Town from Dr. Kenji Emerson. So I'm just going to read this message for us and then uh, go into the warm up question. So. Dr. Emerson says, we've gathered data about the air temperature before the storm started in Galetown and added it to this data table. Carefully look at the storms data for storms two and three below. We think the temperature difference could be an important factor that could help explain the severe storms Galetown is experiencing. Awesome, and I really appreciate that they actually circled what they want us to look at, so it makes it nice and easy for us. But we've added this new uh, area to this table here, which is high temperature before the storm. So we've been learning about the temperature this week and how that might impact storms. So now they are actually giving us some temperature data, which is awesome. So if we look at storm two and storm three, storm two was moderate with uh, about 13 centimeters of rain. And the temperature was high at 27 degrees Celsius. And storm three was severe with about 20 centimeters of rain. And we can see the temperature was very high at 40 degrees Celsius. So this should really help us out in solving this. So um, we had moderate rainfall with a high temperature and severe rainfall with a very high temperature. So that should help us uh, as we move forward as we start thinking about this. And they have this little question how does this increase in temperature affect rainfall? Which hopefully at this point we should have an idea of. But we've got two questions here for our warm up. The first one asks, one of the claims is uh, one of the claims that is used to explain the survey of rainstorms in Galetown is this. Warmer weather caused Galetown to have more severe storms. Do you think that a higher temperature is affecting the amount of rain? Okay. So, do you think a higher temperature is affecting the amount of rain? Let's look. These two storms, based on this data, does it look like a higher temperature is affecting the amount of rain? It's hmm. a nice little, little comparison, nice little analysis of data there. And then once you have got your answer for that there, um, for the second part, it asks you just to explain your answer using evidence from the table. So um, let's see, let's get a sentence started for y'all. So do you think that higher temperature is affecting the amount of rain? So I think that the higher temperature is affecting the amount of rain because in the table, and I will leave that sentence there for you to finish. Um, so I think the temperature is affecting the rainfall because in the table, and then hopefully you're able to use some sort of numbers and data here to uh, finish that sentence of how you know temperature is affecting the amount of rainfall. All right, I'll give you just a few seconds, or you may pause before I move on to the next part, section two. 
So for activity two, it is a word relationship routine, which is something I really miss doing in class with you all because it's usually a great chance to hear a lot of ideas and have you really talk to each other. Um, but we can still do this from home, all right. And uh, so basically in this, uh, what you are going to try and do is answer the question, why is the amount of rain in Galetown different from storm to storm? And our focus is going to be on storms two and three. So your goal is to come up with some sentences that help answer this question, why is the amount of rain different from storm to storm? And uh, just as a reminder, let me pull this up for us. So this is sort of another version of that table, but we've got storm two, with moderate amounts of rain and a warm temperature in storm three with a severe amount of rain and a hot temperature. So those are the two storms that we are comparing. And the goal of this is for you to really try and write multiple sentences. So you are trying to basically write, answer this question as many ways as possible, answer this question in a lot of different ways. And so here are your vocab words that you can use in your sentences, and you are totally able to repeat words. So if you use air parcel in one sentence, you can totally use air parcel in another sentence. If you want to try and put all of these words in a single sentence, holy cow, that is tough. But, you know, why not challenge yourself and go for it if you feel like you really understand this? So as an example, um, one of your sentences to answer why the rainfall is different from storm two to storm three, um, just as an example, I could say the air parcel for storm three likely rose higher in the troposphere. So once again, the air parcel for storm three likely rose higher in the troposphere. So my sentence there does answer this question, but it doesn't quite answer it all the way. So your goal here is to write multiple answers that you can piece together and really have be a complete answer to this question that talks about energy and temperature and the troposphere and air parcels. So I kind of got you started there with the sentence, but try to write two or three more that use these vocab words to answer that question. Um, as you work on that, uh, there's no spot here on Amplify for you to write those down. So this will have to be on a separate piece of paper, but that is totally fine. Um, so pause the video as you write those sentences and we will meet back up for activity three, where we'll be doing a little bit of drawing, a little bit of modeling. See you then. All right, so for activity three here, like I mentioned, we are doing some modeling. So if you read here at the top, it says in chapter two, you have been investigating how the temperature of an air parcel can affect the amount of rain in a storm. Use the modeling tool effect of temperature to show how warmer weather caused different amounts of rain during the two storms. So basically what this is asking us to do is to create two models um, one to show why storm two had a moderate amount of rain and the uh, other model is to show why storm three was different and had a severe amount of rain. So I will say this modeling tool is a little bit confusing and difficult when you first look at it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about the model, explain it, and then we'll go through storm two's model together and then you are going to do Storm 3's model on your own, um, just so that you kind of have an idea of what you should be doing. But first, I want to introduce you to the model. So, yep. So um, there is a before side and an after side. So the before is before the uh, that air parcel has started rising into the air, and then the after is after that air parcel has finished rising and has made its cloud. So on the before side, um, there's actually not a whole lot for us to do here. There will be a little bit, but you can see there's the air parcel we can, where we can put in how much water vapor there is and how much temperature there is. 
On the after side is where things get a little bit more exciting though. So we will be putting in uh, how high into the trophosphere we think this air parcel will rise. So will it stay down low, rise a medium amount, or rise a high amount? We can say how much liquid water we think that the air parcel ended up making, the ending temperature, and then there's a spot for us to draw a rain cloud. So is it a big rain cloud with lots of rain, a small rain cloud with not very much rain? And just sort of as a key, so you just have some ideas of the things that we'll be putting in. Temperature, we'll be using just like words from very low, low, medium, uh, water, low, medium, high. For energy transfer, um, basically the more arrows that we end up drawing for energy transfer, that means the more energy this air parcel will lose. And like I said, we're drawing clouds for those last ones. So uh, I'm going to get my whiteboard set up so that we can go through Storm 2's example together. So I'll get that up in one second. All right, everyone. So here is my whiteboard. We will be doing the model for Storm 2. Uh, if you are just using a blank piece of paper, you can draw something similar to this. So just kind of copy this and draw it down. But um, we're going to start on the before side. So we have the trophosphere temperature set to medium. Um, our water vapor for both tests is going to be high. And for storm number two, the temperature of the air parcel is going to start off as high because it was a warm day that day. So our next step is to think about how high into the trophosphere do we think that this air parcel is going to travel? So for that, um, let me see. I, I know that this is a high temperature. It's not a super high temperature. So I know that this air parcel will probably travel up kind of a medium high amount. It won't go quite all the way up but it will end up going a medium high amount. So next to figure out is, so if it's going up a medium high amount, what might that rain cloud look like? So um, I know if it goes up a medium high amount that it'll probably have, A, a sort of large storm because it has a lot of water vapor. It's not going to be a gigantic storm. So it's not going to be like if it was a gigantic storm, my cloud would take up like all of this space here from this side to this side. So it's not a gigantic storm, but it is a big storm. And we need to figure out just a few more pieces. So at this point in the trophosphere, I would say the temperature would be low. And way up in the troposphere, it would be very low temperature up here, which means that my air parcel is also going to reach this low temperature. And if there is that low amount of temperature, then that means we know that this rain cloud is going to be about a medium amount. But we forgot one last thing which is to think about how much energy that this air parcel is going to lose over the course of its journey. So is it going to lose a low, medium, or high amount of energy? So it's starting at a medium temperature and it's going to a low temperature. So it's probably losing a medium amount of energy. So to show that, I'm just going to draw two arrows leaving the air parcel to kind of just represent that it is losing a medium amount of energy. And I think for our model, that is about what we need to represent Storm 2. Storm 2 is starting at a high temperature. It loses a medium amount of energy as it travels about a medium way up into the troposphere. It becomes a low uh, low temperature and it makes a large rainstorm. So what you need to do now is come up with your own model for storm three.
So you need to follow this same sort of method of going through these different steps. How much energy do you think it's losing? How high into the trophosphere do you think it would travel? Um, what is the temperature of that thing going to become? And how big of a storm is it? So hopefully you can use all the stuff we've learned, all the science, to make a model for part three on your own. All right, everyone. Hopefully your models turned up well. Um, and that third model showed that your air parcel ended up going, hopefully the third storm went higher, which meant more energy transfer, which meant a bigger rainstorm. So hopefully your model had something along those lines. But uh, just as a quick reflection here at the end, there's just a couple questions for us to think about. So uh, first off, uh, examine your models and compare how much the air parcel changed temperature and answer the questions below. So hopefully in your answer there, you had storm three end up at that very low temperature because it traveled up higher because it started at a warmer temperature. So hopefully storm three had a greater temperature change. And now let's sort of look at the explanation of why. So why, ex what explains the greater temperature change? So there was more surface water. So let's think about that. Did, um, did the amount of water affect the temperature change? Um, I don't think we've seen that. I don't think we've seen the amount of water affect temperature change. So I don't think that's it. Let's look at the second one. The surrounding air temperature at the surface was different. Uh, okay, so the temperature around the air parcel when it was still on the ground was different. Did that cause a greater temperature change? Um, you know, I I don't think we've seen that either. Um, it's, it's as it goes up, like as long as it's warmer than that ground level, it's going to rise. And then as it goes up, it still has to be a higher temperature to keep rising. So I, I don't think the air temperature at the surface had a big impact there either. So let's look at this last one. Um, the air parcel lost more energy. So um, energy is a measure of temperature, right? So um, if the air parcel lost more energy, then it would have a bigger temperature change. So I think this one makes sense to me, and hopefully, hopefully that one makes sense to you all as well. Um, so those are just some quick reflection questions. And then um, one last thing for us to think about before we sign off for this video and head on to the next one. But um, we have our three claims. We already know that claim one is true. We know that the lake did have an impact on Gale Town's rainstorms. So now we're looking at claim two, one like last time, um, which was warm weather caused Gale Town to have more severe rainstorms. So think about what we learned in this unit, what we did in our models, the reading we did on the disaster in California. And do you think warmer weather caused Gale Town to have more severe rainstorms? I'm going to leave it there. Um, this is a question for you to reflect on and think about. Hopefully your answer says something about air parcels, something about temperature, something about distance traveling, like height traveling up in the troposphere, something about um, energy transfer. All of those things are hopefully part of your answer to explain if you think warmer weather had an impact on Gale Town's uh, rainstorms. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Hope you all have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.